I want to talk about shadows in art. You may have noticed that artists like to show us not only beautiful things, but the shadows that they cast. Shadows might be dark or they might be pretty colorful. Shadows often add drama to a painting or a photograph. In the shadows, there's more room for our imaginations to take hold. We might get spooked out or we might see things a little bit differently. Artists practice and study shadows a lot and they make some really cool art with shadows. Look closely at this art by Kami Yamashita. She creates art that very simply, it is only a panel that is stuck to the wall so that a light can shine on it and make a beautiful, almost ghostly shadow. Look also at Tim Noble and Sue Webster. They use all kinds of random objects to create shadow shapes on the wall that might surprise you. How many people are actually standing in this room? Rashad Alakbarov also creates shadow art, but sometimes using clear acrylic paper airplanes or discarded plastic bottles. These common objects situated on a table remind me of a Middle Eastern skyline. And last, I wanted to share the art of Larry Kagan. He uses all kinds of unusual shapes to make a beautiful wall sculpture that with the proper lighting creates an amazing shadow. For your shadow art, maybe you'll want to try some shadow tracing. Set up some objects or forms in some light and put out some paper so you can trace those amazing shadows. This is a video of me finding a shadow in my home that I wanted to trace with pencil. I patiently traced and then I patiently colored inside of my interesting shapes. Another idea for you is a found or created shadow photo. You might set up some objects like I did here or here, this was a pillow to look like a face, to make some cool art. You can also try colored shadows. Maybe you'll make a found or created shadow video. You might find or make some moving shadow art. You can use your hand shadows or your body or some puppets. You might want to just practice shadow drawing or painting. Maybe you can set up some objects or make up your own characters to create a shadow. If you have the right materials like crayons or colored pencils or oil pastels, you can try something like a winter landscape. To do that, I traced a rectangle to make a little bit smaller picture than my piece of paper. I fixed my rectangle a bit and now I'm drawing what's called a horizon line, pretty high up on the picture plane. It's about a third of the way down from the top. That round circle can be a sun or a moon. And now I'm lightly sketching straight lines that come out of that light source so I can see which direction my shadows will be. Any place that my line connects with the horizon line is where I'm going to place a tree. So there's going to be at least four tree shadows here on my picture. I turned my page upside down and I started in with some blue. I'm thinking about how a tree grows and I'm starting with a thick trunk and then using my oil pastel to build higher and higher, making smaller and smaller branches. And eventually there will be even smaller twigs. It's fun to think about how a tree grows all through the summer, adding lots of new twigs and leaves, growing taller. And then in the winter, it all slows down and we can actually see those details. I have fast forwarded a bit so you can see that I've drawn those trees on those lines and added lots of detail. I decided at this point I wanted to add another feature to my art and I'm doing a figure because there was a big space in my snow. Then I'm going to turn my page right side up and I need to draw on the actual trees and the actual person. To do this, I chose a dark color. You can use brown or black or gray. 
and I am drawing my trees standing nice and straight and tall. And I did the same with my figure. It was hard to think about mirroring that human figure to look like it was making the shadow, but I kept looking at the shadow to make sure I got my lines right. With oil pastel, going back in with white helps make your shadows look more soft, helps your trees look more like bark, and in general makes it look a bit more like a painting. You can decide whatever colors you want for your sky. Skies do not have to be blue, and it can be a daytime sky or a night sky. I'm gonna leave my sun very bright white, just like I would do if I was using the moon. After you color with one color on oil pastel, it's nice to add a second layer. I'm adding some beige on top of the yellow just to see what happens. And just some finishing touches of white to add more of a snowy look to my winter shadows. I hope you have fun drawing shadows too.